Hi everyone and welcome back. So what I just have played was study number 42 from the book Louis Fayard Studies of the Young Cellist, which is a great study for big distance shiftings. And in today's lesson, I will break things down for you so you will have an easier time when you're gonna do this study or in general to improve big distance shiftings. If this is the first time you come across my channel or my videos, well, hello, nice to meet you. I hope you enjoy my content. And if you like this content, which is all cello related, then consider to subscribe. Now, let's go and see what I have to say over here. To start with, a very common mistake that I see in people when they are doing shiftings is that they are insecure and they are searching the note that they want to reach. Well, in cello playing, there is one thing that you need to know. If you are going to search unsecurely, you will never find a note. When we do these kind of shiftings, like here in this study or in other etudes or in musical repertoire, it is always important to have a reference. And for that, obviously, we need to map the fingerboard very well. Of course, to map the fingerboard, this takes years of practice and experience. But there is a way that I will show you in just a bit how we can master these kind of shiftings. I will show you now a wrong example and then afterwards a good example from the first two measures of this etude. Let's go. Well, I hope that you have heard the difference because to have a reference when you shift, it's very important because like that, you're going to get clean, stable shiftings. So I really don't recommend that you slide with the finger just like that. No, instead of that, I'm going to show you now a quick step by step guide how we can find these references and how we can practice to get these clean, stable shiftings. Let's do this.
So practically the reference is to get the middle note. So the second note, as I showed you in the step-by-step -step guide. And once you have that, do it fast and faster until you dominate it. Now let's go to the next common mistake when it comes to shifting. People often use too much movement from the arm and by using too much movement, you lose precision. I hope that you could see the difference between the two examples that I just showed. So the first example, I was really moving a lot with my arm and incredibly enough, many people do that. They move too much with their arm and when you do that, you lose precision, as I mentioned before. Now instead, open up because when by opening up your arm, you're going to have much more precision. Believe it or not, but it's like this. You just need to try it out. You need to explore it. It just needs time. So this cover is going to really help you. So see, I just moved that part over here. So see, I'm just opening like that. Very easy. One more time. Of course, when I'm showing without playing, of course, the movement, it's much bigger. When we do the actual exercise, it's not that big. It's just a small opening. Try it out. Good. Now that I have mentioned about this middle note thing and the opening of the arm, there is one thing left. And this is also very important if you want to improve this study. And this is bow distribution, the amount of bow that you are using. Here it's important that we have a very organized bow because if we don't have an organized bow over here, things get all over the place. Let me just show you an example. Again, you probably could hear the difference in the sound, right? So it's important that we use a very organized bow. So how I suggest you to practice this is to do this by parts. So we take the first two notes, we stop, then we do the next two notes and so on. Let me just show you. Now we stop. Stop. Make sure that you divide equally, more or less. Let's say that this goes fine, then you can try to connect. What you can do as well is just to play the notes without the breaks. So we can just try to slur. Because by playing just the quarter notes, you will have a better control and a better vision how to divide your bow. Then afterwards, you can try with the breaks. So these were the most important things that you need to pay attention when playing this study. I hope that you will apply the things that I mentioned into your practice. For some of you, it might take a little bit more of time, but once you get it, it's going to be very rewarding. Of course, we can dig so much deeper and find so many other things. Actually, the possibilities are eternal. But let's do this in other lessons, one step at a time. Thank you so much for watching this lesson. If you enjoyed this lesson, give it a thumbs up and definitely check out my next video, which is going to appear in the end screen after this lesson is finishing, where I am going to compare my two cellos. This one, which is the cello from 1763 against my other cello, which is the one made by Julius Cesar Vesper from 2021. This is a really great comparison video, so you don't want to miss it. And I'll see you there.